The following is a live broadcast of a Lone Star Community Radio program. Recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Connors FM 104.5, 106.1, and Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. For more information on this show, please visit our show page at IRLoneStar.com slash shows. To sponsor or donate to this program, visit our donate page at IRLoneStar.com slash donate, or email us at lscrstudios at gmail.com, or give us a call at 936-666-1084. Lone Star Community Radio production and broadcast is possible by folks like you. So sponsor and donate today. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monday, September 21st from downtown Conroe, Lone Star Community Radio. I am your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorize PR. This It's also available on FM 104.5, 106.1 on our city TV, City of Conroe. There will be a YouTube of this link and show, and it will be posted on Conroe Culture News, which we are live at Facebook on Conroe Culture News today. So, uh, welcome to fall. Uh, when is fall? When is the first day of fall? I think it's this week. We're going to call it today. We're going to call it today because it's kind of fallish. So sitting here in the September studio with 22nd. me is Sandy Barton, Executive Director of the Greater Magnolia Parkway Chamber of Commerce with Robert Franklin. He is the board chairman also, and he's with Edward Jones. Um, in the second half today, we will hear from Meals on Wheels, Montgomery County with Sarah Redfield and her team talking about the great pumpkin shoot that's going to take place at Blackwood Gun Club. So, this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic, located by Conroe High School. And if you're a new patient, uh, it's only $25, and it all goes back to CASA. The Child Advocates Special, special Court-Appointed Special Advocates is CASA. So, things that are happening. Things are opening up. Maybe you don't know that, but they are starting to open. Downtown Conroe has people walking around right now. The shops are open. The Conroe Art League, right around the corner from us on Simonton, 127 Simonton by the Red Brick Tavern, is open. The gallery is open Tuesday through Saturday, so just not today, but Tuesday through Saturday. 10.30 to 5.30, and you could view their September display from all the local artists and pick who you want to win the People's Choice Award. It's a cash award the artists get. They do that every month. So go visit, and uh, maybe you'll find something that is unique that you need to take home with you. And their classes are also opening up. They have figure drawing, acrylic painting, watercolor painting, and uh, right now they are raising funds for the Montgomery County High School Art Scholarships through September 26th. So that ends this week. If you want more details, go to ConroeArtLeague.com. So, like I said, I am sitting here with Sandy Barton, Executive Director of the Greater Montgomery Greater Magnolia Parkway Chamber of Commerce. That's a lot of words all together. And Robert Franklin, he's the chairman of the board. Uh, he's also with Edward Jones. And if you want to know more about anything, you can go to Greater Magnolia Parkway CC.org or just put it in Google and that'll probably take you there faster and also on Facebook. So, welcome, friends. <laughs> Of course. So uh, you have a lot. There's a lot of stuff on the calendar coming up. Oh, yeah. We are busy. Uh, just like you mentioned that, that Conroe's opening up, the chamber is open, and we are, um, we've been meeting in person uh, since July. And, and don't so, you like that better? Oh, my gosh. It's so important for our business owners and, and managers to be able to meet face-to-face and to connect and build relationships. I mean, Zoom is nice. It allows it allowed us to at least... <laughs> it was nice at you know, first. <laughs> it, it allowed us to at least c- keep connected in some little manner. But really, people like to do business with people that they know and trust. And it's hard to get there via Zoom. So we're back that's in right. person. That, that's true. And yeah. there was a breakfast last week. Yep. How many people were at that breakfast? We had about 40 odd people at that breakfast it was crowded yep it was but i mean we were, we were trying to be do- socially 
distance. We we were able to do it safely. That's the thing that we like about our community is that we know everybody cares about everyone else, and so they're interested in doing things safely. So either socially distancing, you know, an appropriate distance, or masking up, or both. And so we're very pleased that that we're able to do these things where some communities cannot. You know, we're just very fortunate to be here in Montgomery County. Uh, where we have leadership that understands the importance of being able to meet so it is important and I mean I went there uh, it's good to see new people new members you have people joining the chamber all the time there's um, a gal mm-hmm. who does yoga yeah mm-hmm. and, and she on, just joined yes, yes. on yes. FM 1488 yes. body and she, brain Conroe absolutely she seems like a wonderful person uh, with a unique kind of a shop i've never actually tried yoga i probably need to do that well, this one is a little i'm going to give her a little plug it's a little different kind of yoga it's not a traditional east indian type of yoga it is a korean yoga and so it's more um as she explains it it's more uh, holistic where it connects your body and brain and helps you to deal with a lot of physical maladies through reconnecting with yourself so i'm interested in trying it out too so i'm ready to give it a shot but yeah she just joined last week we have we've had a number of people already eight people this month that have come on board as new members of our chamber and we have a lot of you know we have 300 existing members that have been you know with the chamber for quite some time and continue to support the chamber and the work that we're doing on behalf of them we had two members join at the uh, the golf tournament last yes. week because we oh, had really? the golf tournament last week. Yes, that was yep. very yeah, last well Monday. So how was the golf tournament? We had what seventeen teams. Eighteen teams. We ended up with eighteen teams, and uh, we sold out every sponsorship. Um, That's I think, very I think, encouraging. I think, I think people were just ready to get out. Oh and, yeah, they and, are ready. And be in person. Yeah. And so I think that helped the event a lot. Yeah. And and Timing. as Robert said, two of the people that attended as golfers said, we need to be part of this organization and decided to join right there on the spot. So we were very pleased. And so not all, you know, chambers in the area are opening up to the extent that we are. But like I said, we feel pretty confident that we're able to do that and do it effectively. And well, and there's a luncheon this week, too, yep. right? Yep, you bet. We've got uh, Dr. Todd Stevens, the superintendent of Magnolia ISD, that's going to come out. Let us know how it's going with the schools now that they're open and the kids are back it in school. It should be interesting. I'm very interested to see what he has to say. Uh, we love Dr. Stevens. He's always a great speaker. He tells us a lot about what's going on with uh, with the school, uh, with the teachers, and with the children in the community. So it's, it's important to hear from him on a regular basis. Of course it is. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, the schools are very important. And, you know, I wonder how that's all working. You know, the kids wearing masks has got to be quite challenging, especially for younger kids. Well, and that's why we invited Dr. Stevens out, you know, at this time. We want to hear how things are going. And and for him to let our business owners and managers in the community know, what can we do to help? What can we do to participate or support the efforts support. that the schools mm-hmm. are are dealing with right now and the teachers are dealing with right now? So um, I'm certain we'll hear more on Thursday. And everyone is welcome to come on out, by the way. We're going to be at the Magnolia Event Center. Uh, you don't need to be a member to attend. You just got to go out and register in advance to, as Margie said, greatermagnoliaparkwaycc.org. We'd be happy to have you out. And there's the event on Facebook. I saw it there this morning. Yep. So you can that'll take you directly that link mm-hmm. to go and register for the lunch. And it's okay. a good lunch. It's always a great lunch. Nice hot That's meal. Good, yep. good food. Yeah, well, Chef you know, Derek I mean, does a heck of a job. If you're going to eat lunch, might as well go and be entertained and get some knowledge while you're eating, right? That's right. That's, right. That's, how, that's, what <laughs> we, know? that's what we think. And I, they're still doing temperature checks, too, aren't they? They are, yeah. Again, we, you know, we want to try to do things safely at the Magnolia Event Center. They ask that people wear masks, if possible, or at least social distance. Obviously, it's not you know, uh, feasible when, when people are physically eating. But most of our attendees are very self, you know, conscious about that and are very safe. But they do take temperature checks and they do ask for a personal statement um, that you would sign that you have not been recently exposed. So again, just to be safe, we just want to make sure everybody has an just opportunity. procedure, sure. Right. And, and then you come in and enjoy. Table-wise, yeah. I think there's fewer per table. I think there's only four to, or so. Three or, three or four. Right, yeah. per table. So we're right. limiting how many people and are each per table, table so, so are that you can spread them out a little bit. At least six feet apart so that everybody, again, just can be safe and still be in person and attend. Well, and the lunches are something that is unique to this chamber. You know, there's five five chambers, well, six with the Hispanic yes, Chamber, right. too, in Montgomery County. And uh, the monthly luncheon is unique to 
the Greater Magnolia Parkway Chamber. And last month we had uh, our DA, and that was very educational. Yeah, and he, he's a great presenter. Yeah, he really helped us all understand the impacts of uh, the governor's GA uh, 29, and you know what led to his decisions with regard to the mask order, etc. Uh, so we were very grateful that he took the time to come on out because I think we all learned a little something. Yeah. And our, right. as a result, our government affairs group was really very active in uh, preparing for the 2021 state legislature and you know, ensuring that the message is going to be very clear to our elected leadership in Austin that, that GA29 needs to go away. Well, you know, and that's another thing. When you join the chamber, um, they, one of the major things besides networking is advocating for the businesses at, at the government level and taking it to your legislators, whomever it is that's representing us. And every two years, all the chambers go to Austin, have a Montgomery County Day at the Capitol. And two years actually seems to go by pretty fast. It does. I can't believe <laughs> I that we're preparing for it already. But, but that's the case. And when you're a member of the chamber, you have a seat at the table. That's right. You know, your, your voice is is what's carried forward to our elected officials. And those elected officials will tell you um, very clearly, uh, Brent Creighton was very clear, it said, geez, if, if chamber membership hasn't been clear to every business owner uh, in your respective communities before now, it should be now because they're here talking with us about mm -hmm. what needs to happen at the state level. And as dollars are tighter this budget season for our elected officials mm -hmm. at the state level, um, our chamber voices are listened to very closely. And so, uh, and, and that was well, the chambers that have I, a lot of clout. They really yeah. do. You know, our uh, elected officials are very and, involved in our chambers. Absolutely. So uh, I, again, I just think it's important to know that uh, the Magnolia Chamber is unique in the fact that you have this lunch and no other chamber does it every month they do special occasion special kind occasion of lunches, lunches or uh, for elections see, and, and that I kind of thing that at all. See. well see I you need see. to get this, out this more is, right, this right, is the, right, right. the only Mark, chamber Mark. i'm in i'm a yeah, member yeah, of four yeah. chambers <laughs> <laughs> me well, myself and i and my phone for, for, for us all of, for all of for it's all of important. our events you know and particularly our luncheons our business success seminars all the other things that we do are there to help our business owners and managers be more knowledgeable business owners and managers when they walked out than when they walked in. And it's just very mm -hmm. important for us to be able to live, deliver as much diverse programming as we can uh, to help them because everybody has different needs yeah. right. yes continue to grow and, thrive and it's in our all community. of that all the relationship things so Absolutely. the other thing yeah i mean we have the luncheon this week with todd stevens and mm -hmm. then coming up next month october one of my favorite months mm -hmm. is uh fall festivals yep. and that has changed now so it's 10 to 5 it's actually noon to six. Noon to six. Sorry, it's noon. That's okay. Faking it's, it out. It's if you're fault. a vendor, you can start setting up. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. yeah. You'll, yeah, you'll come out at ten o'clock to start okay, setting so up. So there but, you go. <laughs> but yeah, Fall Fest is now but noon still, to six, and, and it's free. It's free to attend. It's free to attend. Obviously, there's a there's a cost for vendors to set up, but sure. all vendors are welcome. Uh, you do not need to be a member to be a vendor. We are partnering with the Mag Rotary Club of Magnolia, mm -hmm. who is our lead sponsor for this event, and they're going to be um, sponsoring kid stuff, you know, face painting and some Interactive kids' craft. activities. We also have the Way Family Dojo that is a sponsor of that event, and they are going to have a kids' craft area inside the Magnolia Event Center. And again, as you mentioned, there's no cost to attend, so we're looking, we're hoping that we get, we've already started getting a lot of them, but we hope that we get a lot of vendors who will be able to bring their wares to the Magnolia Event Center to be part of this so that a lot of us can pre-start our Christmas shopping. Yes, so we're get on we're, it. We're going to be running right into the, the uh, holiday season and, and our, you know, big shopping season. And as we know... Walmart isn't doing Black Friday anymore, so where are we going to shop? Here, okay, <laughs> so where are we going to shop? We're going to have to shop. We're going to have to shop at, at things like it's that. It's just a good feeling, you know. We all need happiness, good mm -hmm. feels, all of that. As we've had such a challenging 2020 year, so we want to push it out of the way and start working towards the holidays. I was just talking yep. about that with our neighbor over here next door to the radio station, 
And I, I think people are excited for the holidays. And I know that once Halloween is here, it's all over. Right. I mean, time just moves on because there's right. November is a very short month. It seems to get shorter all the time. And, and then you're at <laughs> Christmas. So it is good to start planning ahead. And this is a fun event. Um, I mean... And from what I heard, the, the Nutcracker Market is going to be virtual it only. It is. So this gives those vendors and the people that would shop there normally That's a true. place to go in person. And That's true. I mean, absolutely. I, you know, I just got to say, we I have don't room, know about these We have these room for 70 events. vendors, and we're already 20 <laughs> vendors in. So, you know. If, 70, if, okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the most room. that we can stuck in there. That it's we still can large. In there. That's it a lot. Is. It's great. So, you know. Fabulous. If, if anybody wants to be a vendor, you know, you know go what? online I now. I to tell the... Um, market days vendors that come absolutely. to heritage park absolutely that they need to come so yeah get it on their facebook page yeah yeah absolutely so that will be a fun event yep. uh and so you got the fall festival uh vendor booths are now correct me if i'm wrong yep. members is 75 dollars and non-members is a hundred dollars that's correct for a vendor booth but um, still except for, member restaurants are 50 dollars because we okay. ask them to bring samples okay so, perfect yep we do ask that each vendor also boost their facebook um, event post about it by 25 dollars and that they donate a 25 dollar um, or a, 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 a donation of a gift or prize, prize. Uh, for door prizes and that'd stuff. be great yeah the main thing is we want to get we want to get families involved and and bring bring people more people the more people we can bring to those vendors seems the better like for everybody. there right. would probably be more after school absolutely like the three to six time later. yeah that's a great mm -hmm. idea and the absolutely. more the business people at the lunch time but Correct. it's not there's not a luncheon involved there with is that? not a luncheon okay. involved but you can we get will, samples of food you get samples of food there are also box lunches that are available that are going to be courtesy of the rotary club for the first hundred people who would be there and okay then, more and reason to go that's right more reason be to one come of the first out 100. be one of the first 100 because then you actually get lunch with it um but yeah it's going to be a great event and we feel that you know it's going to be safe and appropriate for everyone are you going to dress up Probably. Probably a costume. I'll probably do something. But there will be a pumpkin patch so parents can bring their kids out. That's fun. Um, to have them, you know. Who's doing the pumpkin patch? Um, it's not locked down yet, but okay. we're excited. We know that we are having the pumpkin patch. It'll be and there. we're working on a sponsor uh, <laughs> no, for that. Aren't they working on a live scarecrow too? They are. We are going to have a lot. We, we kind of have that mm. live scarecrow going for, you know, in the pumpkin That's patch fun. with for um, photos with the kids. We're excited. Nice. It's going to be fun. It's going to yes. be a good one. Let's and bounce across. houses and face painters and princesses and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, the high school kids from uh, Magnolia High School are getting involved. Some of the drama department folks uh, the are getting involved. Cosmopology department. Cosmopology. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Yeah, very good. We're excited. Yeah, sounds like a blast. So then moving on from the fall festival, we have Magic of Christmas. Yep. Right? The Magic of Christmas Parade of Lights. It is, you know, the historical, I think we're in our 47th year, Robert, of this that parade. That sounds about right. 47th year of this parade. It's on the first Saturday in December, 5.30 p.m. Another mm -hmm. one, this is all outside, obviously, and we feel that we can do this safely and people can social distance in their appropriate family groups as they need to. And when they can't, they can be, uh, they can wear their masks and, and we can still be safe. We have a lot of school groups that they're clamoring to. This is a feel-good event. This is a family fun event. It's unique. It's, it's it, another unique thing because there's a uh, Montgomery parade, and mm -hmm. it always seems to be on the same day as the one in Conroe. Yep. Um, there's not one in the Woodlands, but there's no night parade. There's no night parade ever anywhere night around. Parade. This and is this is the night parade for and, Christmas, and, and it's people fun. Love kinda it. Kind of reminds me of Disneyland. Yeah. It, you the, know the lights are so cool Holiday and ice. the and kids yeah, love Disney's it Disney's not doing it either so hey yeah right. even, the, <laughs> even the kid even the kids with the marching bands and stuff when they come on out yeah. they string themselves full of lights it's so it's much fun, fun. It, it is, is so fun. much fun when well, they I come know, on out one thing we're trying to do this year different too is make it because we, we have you know MCs at the front where the judges are mm -hmm. but we're trying to get that to where we can put that kind of like you do with what some people do with the Christmas lights where you know hey tune to this radio station and you can hear the music to go with the lights oh we're I know what radio station yeah <laughs> we're trying to well, figure we're, we're trying well, to figure out how we can um live streaming exactly we're, yeah we're live working on that get that yeah. so the people along that are that are parked along the side of the road along the parade route can also hear oh hear you might want to talk commentary. to dick about that yep well we're <laughs> we're certainly willing to talk with everybody about that so we're yeah, yeah. we're starting those conversations nice. now so that we can include everybody along that two mile parade route so that they can all hear what's going on at the grandstand and they can all hear 
you know, everything that's happening throughout the parade. Well, and then you have a a little sponsor party beforehand. We do. We We have a little VIP for for our sponsors. We have a little VIP party that's going to be um, held close to where the starting lineup is because all of our sponsors also have entries in our parade. Uh, And then we're going to have a new VIP after party at Lone Pint Brewery. They're sponsoring that this year for um, our sponsors and special guests. So we're very excited about that. They were uh, an important part of our, our, our parade in the last couple of years. And we're just really excited that they're willing to do this kind of special after party. Well, I think they're ready to get out, too. Didn't they just reopen recently and have uh, catered food and all of that going on. Well, they've so, got they've got food trucks. And they're right out. in Magnolia. They are right in the heart of Magnolia on Commerce Street and Buddy Riley. Uh, they are open uh, five days a week. They have Reveille Barbecue that is out there on Saturdays mm-hmm. and Sundays, and the and that's other great days. Barbecue. Oh, it's great barbecue. They do a great job. And the other days they have a wide variety of rotating food trucks mm-hmm. that come on out. Uh, they do trivia on Friday nights. We'll give them a plug too. I hope they're listening. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's great. And and they're wonderful partners. Uh, they're very supportive of other businesses in the community, and we couldn't ask for, you know, for better partners and better they have business good beer leaders too. Yeah, can't go wrong. Can't go there. wrong. Yeah, can't go wrong with you know sitting down on a lovely Friday evening and having trivia and a couple of beers. Can't can't go wrong with that. Yeah, well, that sounds good. I remember last year I was still in my stupid boot. <laughs> oh, that's right. You were. You were kind of lingers on. Lingers on. I forgot about that. That's well, awesome. I know yeah. we, we had talked about this earlier too, Sandy. Um, for the for the Grand Marshal, we're going to have oh, lo- yeah. local law enforcement. We've created a uh, Thin Blue Line sponsor mm-hmm. that's $100, $100 and a, a portion of that is going to go back. We're going to do something for the local law enforcement, whether it's you know, buy them all lunch. Do some, we're going to do something. We, I don't think it's been decided, nailed down exactly no, what we're going to no, do but yet. It will, but it will go back directly to support um, law enforcement. And so, again, you can go yeah. right to our chamber website and find the Christmas parade and sponsor that okay. Thin Blue Line. How much is it? $100? It's $100. And, and we've, I barely got it posted i mean i barely got it created and so it was posted to our social media out of our our database provider right away as soon as i posted it and i bet you 10 minutes hadn't passed before we got our first sponsor we just created that on friday like, literally friday, friday afternoon friday <laughs> ah well taylorized pr will do that yep and, and it's a it's a it's been a great we'll, we'll sponsor that we that's we, great me and me yeah me and me yeah, <laughs> me, yeah, and yeah. me and my phone yeah yeah no it's it's <laughs> great we we love it we've been very very pleased so far we've gotten a number of sponsors to that thin and blue line nice um, and and we think it's going to be well received in our in our area and the whole parade, uh, the presenter is uh, Constable Chris Jones, correct? That's Constable correct. Chris Jones loves that. Every year, right at the end of the parade, he'll come right back up and he'll say, I'm in for next year. So we're all, cool. we're all taken care of. And yeah, he is our everybody presenting loves sponsor. Everybody Christmas, right? Come this, on. Everybody comes out for this. I mean, we, we, did, we have people lining the entire parade route. Um, and... It, it, the kids love it. They're so excited. And we always have a live Santa at the, end at the end that's in a horse-drawn carriage provided by Tony Gullo of Gullo Ford. So we um, we just feel that we've got the not just not just a good parade. We've got the best parade because it is an evening parade. It's an evening parade. Mm-hmm. And it just has all the good feels, and we all need that, right? Absolutely. Oh, especially right now. Oh, that's boy. what I mean. <laughs> oh, boy. So um, you can join the chamber and get all these things, all these things that we've been talking about, and you can be there. You don't, I mean, you can pay a lot, um, and you can sponsor, but you can always do a little as it goes and sponsor smaller items like the parade or a luncheon, things like that. I mean, you have the luncheon every month, and you're always looking for sponsors for that. Absolutely. Uh, The breakfast, the networking breakfast is every month yeah our memberships are are very reasonable you know they start at 350 dollars a year and we also take monthly quarterly and semi-annual payments against that so um we you know our biggest or more most important aspect is to help our businesses grow and thrive and we really are the only organization in the community that's working on all of those fronts to provide you with information and education that's providing you with you know economic development opportunities jobs and economic wealth in our area and that's working to advocate 
for the business environment. I mean, we're there if your business can't, won't, or don't have the time to do all of those things. Because mm-hmm. we know as, you know, in our community, it's primarily small businesses, traditional mom and pops. And so if, if you're too busy to do that, that's why you want to be a, a member of the chamber so that we're helping you whether you can it's be a plus there. I, i'm a total believer in chambers and yeah. like i said uh, the magnolia chamber has a lot of unique attributes i mean they're they all have different ones in right. the community sure you know uh but but that's how it should also, be also you're very uh personable because you're a one person team and you're bored and volunteers right oh <laughs> yes we so, are a volunteer led and run you. organization Hello. no man. you it's, see it you touch it well it's our board you know i mean it's our board our board is involved in each one of our committees uh each one of our events their leaders um all of our events have a chair people that are volunteering their time from their business to make certain that those events go off and go off well um, one person could not do all of those things. And so without our, you know, uh, without our volunteers, um, without our volunteer leaders, we couldn't be as active as we are, but we think that we are a very active chamber. I think I mean, so. Um, I think so. We do a lot in the community. I mean, Robert can attest. I mean, sometimes he has to, you know, pull back the reins and say, Sandy, no more. Yeah. Because, um, because, because you can only do so much. You can only touch so many things, and you want it to be right. quality. Correct. You know, um, and I, I believe in it. I but we're, you know, very often, uh, very often, I'll hear from you know a, a business who's considering the chamber and saying, you know, how can I get involved? And there are so many different ways. Just on the few things that we talked about today, we every one of those events is is directed by volunteers they are the ones that well, you make can't, the decisions you can't do it all right i'm there to support them <laughs> you, there's and to no make way sure you that can. the board's plan of work is going off the way it, it's expected you to. you oversee it i Correct. oversee it but the volunteers are the ones that are doing that are doing the heavy lifting they're the ones that are making certain that those things are coming off in a way that benefits all businesses so you know we're I don't know. We're, I think we're particularly fortunate in the level and quality of involvement that we have across the board, across all of our businesses, because I think we have a higher percentage of businesses and business owners that are involved. That are involved. Mm-hmm. And the other, a couple things I wanted to mention, um, and see, look, we, we've almost spoke at oh. 30 minutes. How about that? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. A couple things. So Magnolia is actually expanding, and you know, both uh, all over the place towards the end at 249 with all the new roadway things that are going on, right? 249 and uh, 1488, you got the Audubon going in there. Yes, and then Mm -hmm. 1488 the other way going towards 45, which is new Magnolia, I guess. Uh, I we mean, like it's to kind call of, it the east side of our community yeah, versus the west like, side. It's but in the yeah. twilight zone. It's Woodlands or Conroe or Magnolia, depending on where you're standing on the road. Exactly. Uh, but that whole area is an area of development. Absolutely. So there's a, a lot of things a lot of businesses a lot of growth seems to be happening well, all the time even during 2020 well there's right more, yeah there's more coming yes and we have lots of businesses that are opening during 2020 um and and a lot of new businesses but we've got i mean how many just in the city of magnolia seven or ten thousand new residential rooftops that are coming within the That's, next five years or yeah. so i think um, within the i think last year with the with the it was something like 10,000 in 10 years or something like 10, that. 10,000 in 10 that's years. Lot. Okay, in, that's in a lot of residential growth. When that happens, businesses come. Sure. And, and, and because nature abhors the, the vacuum, are. right? We've got, yeah. we've got people and we've got rooftops and we've got the right kind of rooftops. That's the nice thing about it is mm-hmm. that they are able, uh, they have the disposable income uh, to be able to support local ancillary businesses around them. So we know that as that 249 um, extension corridor develops, we're gonna be seeing even more exponential growth. So we've got um, Audubon Magnolia development that's coming on. Um, in fact, he's gonna be one of our November speakers, the, um, the developer there, Sam Yeager III, of the Audubon Magnolia development, and that's gonna be another master planned community in our area. Wow. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's gonna be hard to almost keep up with the growth, but, but I'm on planning this is and the zoning pl- yeah. as well. Yeah. And I'll tell you, our last meeting last week, we had a ton of plats that we like preliminary plats that we had to approve and, and things like that of of just you know, where they're wanting to you know, start start building those subdivisions yeah 
Yep. That's amazing. So get in on it now. Find something right. that's of interest. And you, there's even a nonprofit roundtable. There is. We do and that quarterly, a nonprofit roundtable, just because we know that if our nonprofits are healthy, our local businesses are doing well as well, because a lot of our local businesses are the ones that support those nonprofits in our community. There's ways to get involved. There's SOS. Uh, there, there's different ways that are community partners. Correct. Um, that's a good, it's a good way to get involved for your business. So anything else you want to add? Did we miss anything? Not that I can think of. I, mean, I don't either, covered, except just come on out. Come on out Thursday to the luncheon. Come on Sign out. up. Our networking breakfast are the, the second Tuesday of each month. It's at free. 730 in the morning. No cost to attend. Just come on out because um, you're going to meet new people and you're going to see what a great community this is and how friendly everyone is and how much they want to know about your business and how well uh, you can make connections in our community. It, the, the business owners here are great, and that's what sets us and, apart, and I those think. those breakfasts even through, <clears throat> excuse me, through a lot of this, they've been very well attended. Yep. I think we're still getting... We had at least 40. Yeah, the room was at least packed. 40. And, and so, yeah, in the month before, I mean, they're, they're starting to grow again every month. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, we... So that's a lot of opportunities to get your, your business name out there. Right, it you leverages do. your time. Right? I mean, you meet... To a lot of people really quick. 60 people in just a few minutes. And they hear your message. And they hear it, and they want to get to know you. That's, That's right. the neat thing. So, it's all about it's awesome. the relationships. Okay. Well, okay. thank you, Sandy and Robert, for sharing the news. And we will see you this week. Talk some more later. So yeah. sign up for Fall Festival, the luncheon, and the magic of Christmas. Yep. It's okay. our pleasure, Margie. Thank we're, you so we'll much. We'll be right back. We're going to take a quick break, break and be back to hear uh, Meals on Wheels. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936-441-9990 for an appointment or visit rogerssteinchiropractic.com. That's R-O-D-G-E-R-S-S-T-E-I-N, chiropractic.com. Have a legal question? Are you a resident of Montgomery County? Call 281-645-6344 to talk to a volunteer attorney from the Woodlands Bar Association. We answer the phones on the first Monday of every month at 281-645-6344 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. to provide general legal information and information about legal resources to Montgomery County residents. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-647. 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Health Center Southeast Texas is a federally qualified health center. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and most major private insurances. For our self-pay patients, we have a sliding scale discount program available. Our health centers have qualified providers and staff striving every day to provide the best quality of care to our patients. Services offered are family medicine, behavioral health services, telepsychiatry, and pediatrics. We have four area locations. Look up the Health Center Southeast Texas online at hcset.com. 
The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. What is homelessness? Have you seen parents struggle to find a job without having transportation or child care? What about the children sleeping in cars with nothing to eat? Families shouldn't have to struggle to survive and children should not be homeless. Family Promise of Montgomery County serves the needs of homeless families and their children. Learn about ways you can help and learn about partnership opportunities at www.familypromiseofmc.org or call our day center at 936-441-8778. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday, your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. A Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for summer internship opportunities, A Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to grab the mic and be on the air. A Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world all year round. Be an on-air personality, talk show producer, or YouTube TV podcast editor. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776. Okay, and we are back. I'm Margie Taylor, your host of Conroe Culture News at Taylor PR. And in the second half, we are talking with the folks from Meals on Wheels and Blackwood Gun Club. I have uh, with us sitting across the way is Sarah Redfield. She is the uh, development and events coordinator. And then I have Gary Kemp Kempker, mm -hmm. and he is the director of development. And at uh, Sarah's, right next to Sarah, socially distanced, of course, is Kara McCullum. She is the director of events and marketing at Blackwood Gun Club. So welcome, y'all. We're going to talk about everything Meals on Wheels, but let's start with the most important thing, Sarah. Thank you, Margie. Um, the fifth annual uh, Great Pumpkin Shoot Aiming to Feed Seniors is coming up Friday, October 30th at Blackwood Gun Club. We just love having our event there. It's such a great space and the staff is incredible. Um, it's a fun morning. You have your afternoon off 
and um, everything's included. It's a sporting clay event. It's one of our biggest fundraisers of the year. So we uh, encourage everyone to come out. It's 72 clays. Your ammo is included, breakfast and lunch, and a lot of awards, prizes, and raffles are there. Right now, um, we are looking for some additional teams and a few sponsors. We have a lot of great sponsors already. I'd like to thank um, Jeff and Dave at SWBC Mortgage. For the fifth year in a row, they are our presenting sponsor. Didn't they win last year, too? They won one of the teams, I thought um, they they've did. They've come in second. They quite Well, they, that's they, pretty they, close. They, yeah. Second. So there are, <laughs> there are <laughs> trophies for first, second, and third. Um, and one thing that's really cool about this shoot is we have experienced and inexperienced shooters, and we have the largest number of women at a charity shoot in all of Montgomery County. This and is the, fun. And the greater Houston area, yes. And one of the fun things is it's called the Great Pumpkin Shoot for a reason. At the beginning, for a warm-up, you can blast some pumpkins to get your aim in. It sounds like fun. So uh, have you experienced this before, Kara? I have not. This is my first year at Blackwood, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I've even got my daughters want to come out and do the pumpkin shoot. Oh, good. In the beginning, they both shoot, so they oh, want to great. come in to shoot. But they, their main thing they want to come for is to launch Oops. the pumpkins in the air because everyone's talking about it at our house, and they're looking forward to it. Great. Oh, that's great. nice. Yeah, I know you guys have had some events going on because I drive past there on 2854, and I see the parking lot packed. It is. People are coming out, and they're shooting. They want to be with their family, and they want to be outdoors in a place that's safe. And we provide that at Blackwood. We've had um, multiple charity shoots. We've had six of them in the last month and a half, and they've been very successful. We had one that we thought we were only going to have 30 people at, and we ended up with 106 people. Oh, my goodness. So people are looking oh for a gosh. reason to get out of the house and be out and of enjoy course. the great outdoors. Yeah. And one thing good, if you don't have to sign up as a team. You can sign up as an individual, and we will pair you with a team. And if um, we have some teams that need coaches – and we're able to uh, get some if we have enough advance notice for that. So what do you need to come to the pumpkin shoot? You need a shotgun, but if you don't have a shotgun, you can rent one from Blackwood Gun Club. Do you need eyewear? Um, yes, hearing and eye protection. Eye and ear protection, and if you need to get that, you can get that at Blackwood Gun Club as well mm -hmm. for only and a few dollars. And if, you, if you're not familiar with Blackwood, it's on 2854. It's a fun place. It's beautiful back there in the trees, too. And uh, Blackwood, over the years, I think they've had it for three, four years? Yes, Jeff's we're on our fourth year. Yeah, I thought so. They have really renovated the place and um, it's just incredible. made it better. And there's going to be a new course this year. So uh, we usually have two courses, but they're... Um, Jeff put in a third course, so we're going to use that this nice. year. So the shooters will get to experience oh, something well, different. Well, that's good. That way there's no real waiting time either. They can just move on. And that helps with social distancing as well because they'll be very well spread out. Do you need volunteers for that? I would do need some volunteers for it, and that will be posted soon on our website. Very good. Uh, or you can email Sarah at MOWMC.org. So then uh, this is out. I mean, the reason you the main reason you're doing this so you can get more seniors off the list, right? Yeah, because you have a lot of seniors, homebound seniors that are on your wait list. Yeah, right now we have 205 seniors on our waiting list. And um, when COVID happened, um, the demand for our services increased dramatically. Um, a lot of people who felt um, no longer felt comfortable being able to leave their home um, called us for a lot of help. Um, so we've had to add more seniors and we've been lucky we've been able to add more but there's still 204 on the waiting list and it, uh, Gary can tell you the cost of uh, feeding a senior for a whole year it's about $1,500 and the increase because of COVID is a little over 40 percent so it was uh, in a short period of time we increased quite a few quite a few seniors on them and that's what moved the list up well, and you still have those community feeding areas, right? I mean, Magnolia, um, East County, and the Woodlands, right? Yes, South Woodlands. Yes. So for those of you not familiar, it's the uh, senior community centers that certain precincts would provide uh, daily lunch, Monday through Friday, hot meals, and activities for the seniors. So it was a way for them to get out, socialize, meet people. And these are the a different population than the seniors that are homebound that we deliver meals to. These were the seniors that were more mobile, but once the senior centers closed because of COVID, we still cooked the meals for them. And um, it uh, really increased uh, the workload on Meals on Wheels because uh, we had to cook the meals and then deliver them to the community centers once a week. 
and the seniors drive through and pick up five meals a week. Of course, it's not as much fun for them, and they, they just can't wait for the centers to open oh, back absolutely. up. absolutely. But, but when you say we, let, let's take a step okay. back, because that meant literally you guys, because volunteers did not help with this for a, a while, right? right it was right. the staff yes. <laughs> so doing all this. <laughs> our, our chef, Chef John, and his kitchen staff would make the meals, flash freeze them, so they're getting home-cooked meals, flash frozen. Then staff would drive out to, say, East County um, Community Center, and we'd have our little orange cones up and our mask on and coolers with the a, with a food in them, and they would line up and drive through, roll down their window and or open their trunk, and we would put the meals in. And they would do that once a week, and they were just always asking, when, when do we get to come back? When do oh, we get yeah. to come back? So Absolutely. Margie, have you heard when any of them are going to be opened back up? No, no, I haven't yet. I'm hoping, I'm hoping soon. But I know y'all did that, and now the volunteers are back on. Yes, yeah, so we're still doing the drive-through for those more mobile seniors. And um, between that and the home-cooked meals, last month, we um, I saw meals the cooked in the kitchen were um, 18,166 yep. for the month of Sarah. August. That's amazing. That's a Thank lot. you for what you do oh, for our community. You're welcome. It smells yes. so good when you walk in that kitchen Ugh. when they're preparing the food, too. I mean, because these are great meals. Yes. I would eat these meals. Well, they aren't shabby. Sometimes we do get to sample them. And uh, <laughs> Are you still doing that? Are you still doing the sampling once a month no, or no? I mean, not with the public. Okay. Not yet. Okay. No, I mean the staff. Okay. The staff. So last week I had um, tomatilla chicken over a Mexican rice. Oh, my oh, gosh. Wow. That was so good. Fabulous stuff. So, and last week, wasn't it last week? A week ago, I guess. Tris made a huge donation. Yes. The restaurant Tris in the Woodlands, are you familiar with yes. that? Well, Chef Austin has always had a heart for helping others. And he's um, a couple of years ago, um, the restaurant did a collaboration where if they sold X number of this really fancy steak board, they would donate money to Meals on Wheels. And he wanted to help out during this time, so he actually donated. Gary could probably tell you more about this. It was this. a thousand pounds um, of ground of ground of rough ground meat. So that uh, that goes a long ways in the kitchen. Uh, Absolutely, that, uh, I think that comes out to about a five thousand five hundred meals, something like that. Yes, I remember Just that. Just of meat, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so that's a big help. And Chef Austin has been out to the pumpkin shoot, so he's coming back out with the team this year. So that will be exciting for us. Um, I could picture him shooting a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's food related, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, and Sarah, you talked about the ladies in the shoot. Let's go back to that for just a second, how there are more women that shoot in this shoot than in any other shoot in Montgomery County. What if I've never shot before? Is there anything for a woman who may be intimidated that we do? Oh, yes. In fact, on Friday, October 2nd, you can come to Wine and Clays, or I should say Clay and Wines, because you have to shoot your clays first. first. <laughs> Very <laughs> important. Yeah, you can't be drinking wine. Yeah, so <laughs> Blackwood is putting on a practice, um, ah. and it's, uh, they'll have four instructors and four stations, and they provide the shotguns and the ammo, so you don't have to do anything but show up, and um, you'll go from station to station, and then afterward... Um, H. Wines, Philippe uh, Legrand and Henri, I forget his last name. They're two Frenchmen. That was very good. That, I was going to say, you uh, say that so beautifully. <laughs> say it was. They're, say um, that again. <laughs> <laughs> Philippe and Henri with H. Wines, um, which is a new wine, um, new establishment in Montgomery. They've okay. been around a couple years. They moved from Magnolia up to Montgomery last year, and they serve French wines. They're also advising a winery in Cold Springs, hmm. and they will um, come and do a wine tasting and also... They make fantastic hors d'oeuvres. Yes. So it'll be a wine tasting hors d'oeuvres, and you just register with Kara at Blackwood Gun Club. And um, how much is it? It's fifty nine ninety five. It's October 2nd from 5 to 7. So, ladies, if you want to get a group together and come after work, it's going to be a really fun night, and you can call 936-441-4040. Did you make an event for that to on register. Facebook? Uh, there will be an event for okay, it, Okay, yes. cool, because then I'll share that with the MCABW ladies, too. Okay, oh, wonderful. That's great. And love it's to have also all out. a date night. So I've already signed up with my husband. So it's a good date night, too, Okay. because it's a Friday yeah. night. So. And we expect it to fill up. So if everyone can call soon. 
That way we mm-hmm. can get account for the hors d'oeuvres and everything. You do a lot of different date night things, don't we you? Do I mean, do you used lot. to. I don't know if you yes, still do. Yes, we did. We did, but well, before COVID. <laughs> yeah. But we do do date nights where you can come out and you can do shooting with your husband mm-hmm. or your wife, and then we have a dinner and wine afterwards, and it's provided by H Wines as well. But we have a lot of things. We try to do a lot of family days at Blackwood as well, mm-hmm. and just a lot of things that promote unity. Mm-hmm. Because I know that uh, um, there was a lot of youth events out there yes as well we do. Again, going we, back to the family we, youth teams have won a lot of trophies they have they? our our youth to the blackwood shooting team yep. is very very highly ranked and they're really good we've had um multiple kids go on to call it to have called full paid college scholarships from oh, blackwood wow. mm-hmm. that's fantastic at the different yeah. schools so it's mm-hmm. great and we have a we have a very strong 4-h bunch of 4-h programs that come out and shoot so there's a lot to do out there we have a rifle range a pistol range and then the sporting clay it's fun and exciting. Family fun. Outdoors. It is. It is. It is. Margie, you, you know, come and shoot some pumpkins? I don't know. I'm not a very good shooter, but I might. <laughs> hey, I you, might. you need to come to Wine and Clay's. Clay and Wine. That's first. what I'm saying. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I might come and just let others shoot, and then I'll do the wine afterwards. Yes. yes. <laughs> you, can always, you can always do that. I can be social. <laughs> I can add that. It's a great that. place to network. <laughs> So, Gary, you uh, started during COVID, right? Yes, I did. With Meals on Wheels. Yes, I did. And now you're fully enthralled into the whole thing. What are you working on now? We're, we're, I'm working on developing partnerships within the community for the organization. That's my primary goal. Okay. So what, what comes after this? Didn't you say well, I, something about turkeys? Yes, we have a couple <laughs> different things going on. One thing I'd like to talk about is... Um, it's really fun to talk to the seniors so yes. um and for people to know what's the average age of the seniors that we serve that are, deliver meals to the homebound senior population well the average age is 80 but we actually have four seniors in their hundreds wow and the latest one she's going to turn 105 in october her name is margie and she just got on service in june because she was able she and her 87 year old husband were able to manage but now she's going she to has a husband like 20 years younger yes. or 15 or whatever and she has seven cats too oh my um, the but, secret to long life yeah, yeah. <laughs> younger men and cats yeah but so um we have a group that is making uh, birthday bags for every senior the in um the whole month of october we we give every senior on their birthday a little birthday bag but we've gotten a group to uh sponsor the month of October. So they're really excited to be able to make some special things, especially Sweet. for Margie, who's going to be 105. And wow. that group is called um, Dumbbells to Downward Dog. They're a, a fitness studio, um, personalized one-on-one training. There's never more than two people. There's two instructors, the owners, uh, John and Sheila, and they are um, doing the birthday bag drive for October, and I'll get you some pictures, but they're also sponsoring a station out at the Great Pumpkin Shoot. Oh, great. Nice. So they're, they're really helping out Meals on Wheels. And your station sponsors can actually be at the station and talk to guests yes. during the mm-hmm. shoot. So mm-hmm. if anybody is looking for a place to market your business and you want to come out and just have a day of fun, sign up to be a station sponsor because we're going to have a That's lot of people idea. running through that day. And so then you asked me about turkey day treats. So This is a really neat thing, and I was surprised at first how many people wanted to sign up for this, but people sign up to deliver Thanksgiving treats on Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Day. I thought everyone would want to be with their families, but it's... No, it's a new trend. You want to get out and do something. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you can um, (laughs) sign up to deliver the treats, or you can um, sign up, or not even sign up, just make the Turkey Day treats. So um, we... The, there's a general list, and we have a flyer. You can do um, cans of chicken, cans of green beans, cranberry sauce, um, instant mashed potatoes. You can add little packets of hot chocolate or a spiced apple cider. So do they make the bags themselves? They do it with Meals on Wheels? They just bring the stuff? Or how does it work? Uh, well, if you're interested, let us know. We'll send you the flyer because the seniors do have some nutritional guidelines. And we'll send you, and you just can package them up in, in brown paper bags, like lunch bags work really well. And um, then you can also either in conjunction sign up to deliver, or you just say, oh, I don't want to make them, but I just want to deliver. So either way works. We, we try and be very Will you have that flexible. information on your website? We do. Okay. We do. It's called Turkey Day Treats. If you're going to deliver, what time does that happen? Um, it usually, uh, so you would need to pick them up beforehand um like the day before or that morning there's a couple um 
uh, days that week, um, and then you deliver them between 10 and 1 on Thanksgiving okay. Day. So usually we have the pickup, I think it's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday we have the pickup. That sounds like a great thing to do. And how many seniors would you be delivering to? As many as people sign up. And right now you have how many seniors uh, that you're serving? We have a 705 on service. Throughout the county? Throughout throughout the 1,000 <laughs> have you done square that yet, Gary? miles of Montgomery County. 1,100 square miles of Montgomery County. Yes. And you've been a part of that yes, delivery? Yes, I have. It's, uh, you got to learn feet on the ground, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Very rewarding, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, where was the six dollar thing? There was oh, six dollars serves one home cooked meal, right? Yes. Um, for six dollars, that would include the cost of the delivering the meal as well. It's it's everything, um, administrative, all costs combined. So everything that you've been talking about today, people can go to MOWMC.org, Meals on Wheels, Montgomery County, MOWMC.org, or Google it, or your Facebook page. Find out how to volunteer, how to sponsor a station at the... Um, Sign up to shoot. The pumpkin shoot. You can go to the wine and clays Plays. on October 2nd. Yes. Um, and Gary's got one... Thing to tell you about that we just got finalized last week that's not on our website yet about share the share gary it's fifth, your turn to talk the fifth annual <laughs> fifth annual miles for meals oh miles ah for meals. yes yes so. well i think you have more okay. details than all right I do that's um well we're getting the hurry up okay, sign, so, okay. so talk about it a fifth <laughs> annual miles for meals 5k 10k you can february. walk or run february 6 sign up i did the walk last year and she hurt herself but no i anyway. didn't <laughs> that was just the first time I'd walked that far. Okay. All right. So, anything else? Any last words? Gary? I'm good. You're good. M-O-W-M-C.org. Kara? Sign up for the Great Pumpkin Shoot. We'd love to see you at Blackwood. Okay. And we're so thankful for Meals on Wheels. That's all. And this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic. And there will be a YouTube of this put on Conroe Culture News later on. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Meals on Wheels. Today's show was recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and all rights and ownership are reserved to Lone Star Community Radio. For more information regarding this program and Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, serving the community with local programming on TV, radio, and online. If you enjoyed today's program, please support us by sponsorship or starting your own show. Contact us today by phone or text at 936-666-1084 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.